Well, without further ado, then, let's jump right in, Lucia. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. Um, we're really excited to be here at ApacheCon. Um, thanks to Apache for having us. Um, today, we'll be talking about the versatility and functionality of Apache Drill. Um, it is a very popular open source query engine that has many benefits. Uh, Monty and I will be going through those exact benefits. We'll be going through a couple of use cases, what the query engine supports, and maybe show you some fun examples of um, how you know we use it or how you can use it in your organization. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So hi guys, I'm Monty. I'm a data scientist at Data Distiller and a little bit about myself. I work alongside clients and customers to incorporate you know, machine learning and client data to generate reports in targeted campaigns. Uh, just a light example of what I do would be to use clustering algorithms to create lists of eligible prospects to be focused for ads. Uh, some projects I've worked with in the past are uh, Chicago crime statistics with relation to geographical coordinates within the city parameters. My languages are, uh, I have a focus in Python, SQL, relational database management systems, uh, modeling and machine learning. And I'm currently on my final semester for my master's in data science. Great. And I am Misha. I am also a data scientist at Data Distiller. I also work at IKEA. Um, I myself have a background in business strategy. Um, I have an MBA from Johns Hopkins University and also have a background in data analytics with a focus in Python, SQL, uh, relational database management systems, modeling, and machine learning. Um, in terms of industry experience, I've worked with city government, more specifically for the city of Baltimore. Um, I've worked with startups and I'm now working more in sustainability analysis with IKEA. So looking at how the company can reduce its emissions across the IKEA value chain. Very cool. That's quite a background. <laughs> yeah. So about enough about us, let's talk about why everyone's here, you know, Apache Drill, not, not Monty and Misha. Apache Drill is an open source framework that supports data intensive distributive applications for interactive analysis of large scale data sets. Uh, Apache Drill's application, it's a platform for users to operate on their data via a data abstraction layer that allows for the connection and communication between the user's console and their database. For example, it can be configured to communicate to Oracle or SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, and along with other different. So in other words, the uh, drill lets users connect their various databases to the environment for rapid data integration and operation. Uh, Drill also gives its users the ability to work on their data regardless of the format through American National Standards Institute, more commonly known as ANSI SQL. And ANSI SQL is considered to be the conventional language as it's uh, known as the simplest in the industry. You know, it's easy to pick up and it's easy to get started on and you can begin operations in your organization. Uh, Drill also a huge benefit of it is it's a low code environment, making it quick and easy for new members of an organization to begin collaboration with their data teams and data sets, regardless of where they reside. And uh, with this being said, Drill is made in a fashion that allows organizations the ability to simply just jump right in and begin conducting their examination without the need for time costly configurations. And being an abstraction layer, it kind of removes the limitations of the extent that it can communicate. So regardless of the data type that you're working on, you can configure it to be able to communicate and query all of these data types. Anything ranging from CSVs, uh, parquets, 
an Excel file, or even APIs can all be configured in the abstraction layer to allow for easy, simple communication. Right, and kind of drilling down, pun intended, drilling down on um, why the use of this specific query engine, um, probably three overarching um, points. So one is because of its agility you kind of get faster insights without overhead. And by overhead, here we mean um, data loading, schema creation, um, maintenance, and transformations. Secondly, it's flexibility. So Apache Drill has a flexible data model that essentially makes it easy for anyone to manipulate and query data from almost any type of data source. So on the previous slide, we kind of wrote that it acts as a universal translator for your data and it enables you to use SQL and interact with the data as if it were in a table in a database, whether it actually is or whether it's not. So it gives you that level of flexibility to again, analyze multi-structured and nested data in non-relational data stores directly without transforming or restricting data. And the third reason is because of its familiarity. Um, as Monty said, it supports a variety of NoSQL uh, databases and file systems. And data analysts can use Apache Drill to query um, parquet files, JSON files, um, with the help of the normal like ANSI SQL format, just in case, just in the case of structured databases. So, Drill, it's uh, what? Why? Why Drill? What can we do with Drill once we have our data? You know, so that's the big question. We have our data, we can query it. Then, what? Why are we querying it? Why are we querying it with Drill? Drill allows users the ability to clean, prepare, and summarize the limited data for further analysis, and it allows users to connect programmatically, program programmatically using a variety of languages. So, um, all SQL engines view tables as a spreadsheet-like data structure with rows and columns, and all the records have the same structure, and there's no support for nested data or repeating fields. Drill has the ability to view tables conceptually as collections of JSON with additional types as documents. So each record can have a different structure, hence it being schemaless. Uh, this is revolutionary and hasn't been done before. This application is usable in different IDEs, but it requires a bit of a setup and a little bit of a headache that is kind of absent in Drill. And Drill allows users to perform sophisticated analysis by extending its potential via UDFs or user-defined functions that were not originally use, uh, usable in querying, essentially removing the limitations of the query engine. So if you can imagine a function that is useful for your data set, essentially a UDF can be created to cater to that. Uh, Drill also performs sophisticated analysis by extending, uh, I'm sorry, Drill also possesses the ability to facilitate network security, image metadata, and machine learning. So all great uh, features of the uh, query engine. Yeah, and we spoke um, about the various file types, but again, kind of digging into some specific ones that you've probably come across. Um, you can query file types, uh, including log files, parquet, JSON, and other complex formats. You know, later we'll be doing a join using one of these. So you can even like join, for example, uh, JSON to, uh, I don't know, simple CSV or a simple worksheet. Um, you can query Hadoop, you can query relational databases, uh, MongoDB, Kafka, uh, with standard SQL. Um, already mentioned this, uh, it supports UDFs and we'll be showing a variety of examples of them later in the presentation. And more importantly, this is another one which is popular, supports schema on the fly. So traditionally relational databases require you to define a rigid schema prior to inserting the data into the schema. And this schema enables the databases to build indexes to enable rapid querying. Uh, tools that follow this model are known as schema on write. Um, some of you may know. But one of the limitations of schema on write systems is that schema modifications after the fact are quite difficult, if not, you know, in some cases impossible. 
But as tools have progressed, a new technique of schema building has evolved, and that's called schema and read, whereby the data itself is inserted into the system without any schema definition. However, prior to querying, the user must define the schema in this case. Um, this does allow the flexibility in the data mo model, but it's mostly like at a performance cost. So drill, on the other hand, doesn't follow either of these uh, traditional design paradigms. Um, when using drill, it's not necessary for you to define a schema at all prior to querying. What drill does instead, it, it infers a schema from the structure of the data. Um, this approach has its advantages in that it's extremely flexible and doesn't have any time requirement from the users. Um, I will say that it does have its limitations um, so much as Joe can struggle with really like malformed data. But again, like it has its advantages by allowing you to work with evolving schema or schemaless data. Awesome. So let's also show some of the use cases of drill via some UDFs that have been created. So these UDFs have been created to cater to querying that we have found or we've experienced that are very helpful. So we'll see that right here. So to begin, uh, I thought it would be interesting to share with you guys a use case of a geolocation via a user's phone number. So here we are just uh, using, if you guys are familiar with SQL, this will be a, a nice, this will be like super straightforward and simple to you. But if you're not, it'll be a nice like little refresher. We're- um, Monty, do you think we should uh, zoom in a little bit? I don't know how, that'd be a great idea. Uh, I don't know how. Try control and plus, I guess. Oh, oh good yeah. idea. That's perfect, yeah. <clears throat> so here we're just defining a WM, kind of aliasing it. And then the cool part here is the geolocate phone number. So if we look at our query of, um, let's actually just look at Walmart with the phone numbers of Walmart without a uh, prior to it. Uh, right now, uh, let's just see it as a, uh, We'll see it as normalized. So here we are able to geolocate all of the locations of the phone numbers just simply from their uh, area code that was described in the UDF. So someone clever came up and said, you know, I think it would be useful if I have someone's phone number, can I create a function that will be able to pull their location? And now you're able to incorporate this into your querying. You just now added a different column to your data set. This feature can be used for a range of different use cases. The possibilities are, are uh, kind of limitless thinking, okay, I have, I don't know, let's say a collection of my friend's phone numbers, like pen pal friends, and I don't know where they are. I can just whip them in here and then I'll be able to pull them in. Another cool uh, UDF that we can would be the, let me see here. So first I want to show you guys what it would look like prior to the UDF and then what it looks like with the UDF. So prior to the UDF, they're kind of in, in a similar form, but you can see we have some, like so a little bit of a deviation, you know, it's not exactly uniform. Let's see if we can find something else. Just to, okay, here's another one. They're not all in the same format. There you go. So with the UDF, we're able to use, it's called the normalized phone number. So we uh, were calling the column from our file and then now we're normalizing it with the EDF and here, now everything's in a standard form for all of our entries, which is uh, extremely helpful when, you know, data cleansing or if you're doing a bit of an ML and then say there's a bump in the road or if you're, uh, inserting your data set into a relational database management system, it's best uh, practice to have it all in a uniform set. So two so far is the geolocation of phone numbers and the normalization of phone numbers. Mm -hmm. Next we have one 
is the geolocate or the I'll put it in here, Misha, take it away. Yeah, we, we have a question for the phone number one. It says, is this US numbers only? I believe it does work for other countries. Like, do we know that? Like, have we used it for Canada? I believe it does work for some. How do I pull up the chat now that I'm sharing? <laughs> I hope I haven't been ignoring any questions. You got to help me out there, Misha. Um, so far, I see there's one question. Yeah, is this US only? No, uh, you can use on a range of phone numbers. I believe it's the returns are better on like more US and like Canada and UK, but I have seen some cases of like a phone number in Israel or a phone number in, I don't know, like Venezuela, you will get a return for that. I don't think it will be as specific as a city, but it'll return the country via the code. Nice. Yeah, guys, please keep the questions coming. We also have a question section at the end, but feel free to chime in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So this is another query. This is more related to drills, um, GIS functionality. Um, most of the functionality follows that of post GIS. So to use these functions, your spatial data must be defined in a well-known text representation format. So the one that we have here, it's a fun query that essentially shows um, the nearest airports located to a major US um, city. We already, as you can see, have the data sets um, loaded in our instance. Um, but what I'm doing here is creating multiple width and select statements where I've kind of selected um, the, the important variables such as city, ID, country, etc. Um, I'm rounding off a lot of the latitude of longitudes. Um, and then I'm using two GIS functionalities here. So I'm using SD point and I'm using SGD within. So if we can run the query, so here I've used it for locating the nearest airports located to Miami and Florida. And as we can see, it's, you know, showing the three largest airport, which are Miami, Palm Beach, and Fort Lauderdale. So if we go back to the query. So the SD point um, function essentially returns SD point within the given coordinate values. So where I've written um, one, it gives me the nearest airports um, within like one degree of um latitude and longitude we can kind of play around with this so if we do maybe columbus ohio monty there we go so we've got the nearest airports um close to columbus as john glenn and rickenbacker um, very fun query that utilizes GIS functionality, as you can see. And then another query that we have is, I believe we have a join. One second, guys. Sorry. Here we are. I can, oh, we have it, okay. So this is a inner join that we did, um, which kind of utilizes one of the um, JSON UDFs where you're converting um, from a JSON, you're giving it an alias called studio, and then you're performing a inner join um, between two different data sets on one common column, so we have you know, one column in one data set called original title, and the second one again is just called title. Um, so you're combining the TMDB movies with Disney movies and ordering it by um, here the title and the studio. 
So if we show how that result looks like, yep, so it's essentially matched um, the title of a movie to which studio it was produced from. So you can do the same thing where um, you, if you have one data set in kind of a JSON format and another data set in a different format, you can join both of them together, which may be a large file, save you a ton of time on two um, common columns. Awesome. <laughs> I think those are the UDFs and um, use cases that we have. We can probably discuss more. And then um, another question that you're probably wondering is, you know, you know, we've talked about benefits. We've had some use cases that have utilized multiple UDFs. So we did a geolocation UDF, UDF we did GIS, we did um, one where we converted it from JSON. But, you know, the question that you're probably wondering is whether you should drill or not drill. So what is the applicability for your own organization? Um, it, I mean, you probably have to answer a few questions, such as like, what problems would drill solve given your current inefficiencies? Um, if you're an organization that's still working on, I don't know, Excel sheets or CSV files, doing complex train utilizing um, traditional methods, probably yes. Um, again, ask yourself, where does it fit into your organization? Are there certain um, departments that can utilize it more than others. And then again, what data sources are you currently using? We've outlined um, JSON, we've outlined Parquet, we've outlined um, a bunch of others that if you're using, you can probably utilize Apache Drill on. And you know, some of the other benefits in terms of business and financial costs is since Apache Drill follows the ANSI SQL standards, there's no effort in you know requiring fresh learning. You're really leveraging your existing learning from SQL. All you need to do is have, like I said, knowledge of SQL and you can get it started. Um, enterprises don't need to depend on a selected you know, talent pool to access and analyze data. Um, you can utilize your existing talent sources that already use ANSI SQL um, to get results quickly. And the IT department can bypass any unnecessary schema maintenance, maintenance tasks and any ETL cycles and still have simple and straightforward um, governance with the help of granular access mechanisms that are easy to deploy. And then, like we said, the main advantage of Apache Drill is that it's going to significantly reduce the investment towards specifically big data analysis. So you're, look, you're looking at saving um, tons of time and effort in doing simple tasks that you can do on Drill. Um, again, with Apache Drill, big data analyst, uh, it's just become accessible to more people. Um, yeah, and that's why we kind of use it in some of the organizations. Great. I think that is it for our presentation. But we have tons of questions. Uh, did I stop sharing? Uh, yeah. So, how do I see the questions? Oh, how do you not see the questions? I see it. I see it now. I see it now. Yeah. So one of the questions which I think James has kind of answered is: Does Apache Drill support the support cloud storage such as S3 GCS? Yeah, it does. You can integrate it with um, cloud storage um, systems. Um, Bavika has asked, can Apache Drill pull data using an API? Yeah, uh, it can pull an API. Uh, if you configure a plugin and then uh, set up the certain uh, uh, parameters for it, and if you insert your, you know, your credentials, whether it be like your authentication key or your uh, like secret, then once you have it in, you can call your plugin via an SQL statement, select all from API, and then boom, you can integrate it with your CSVs, Excel, Parquet, uh, databases, anything from there. So yeah, absolutely, you can. Yep. And then Claude has asked, can drill convert from RDF slash SQL to SQL? 
Um, I think James has already answered that one. I don't believe so. We have a link there. Um, yeah, it says a 1.18. Yeah, we've had tons of examples. Well, we've had tons of cases where we've utilized various APIs. So we've used um, finance APIs, educational APIs, um, just to integrate it with our existing data set. So when we've worked with clients, we've kind of used their existing data and um, enriched it with an API and performed querying through Apache Drill. Mm. And are there limits regarding file size? I believe there are heap memory limits that may arise, but depending on your setup and like how much you allocate, it can be, it's just, it depends on how much you allocate for it. Yeah. Um, how easy is it to normalize JSON data or is it limited to XML kind of data? No, you can you can definitely normalize JSON data. They're pretty much the same UDFs that we perform, so the ones regarding phone numbers and GIS, um, you can perform the same ones on uh, any JSON file. I will share a... So in the chat, I'm going to share a bunch of SQL functions that you can also perform on drill. So again, just going through them, you can do a ton of math and trig ones. Um, there's a bunch where you can do data type conversions. Um, so you can cast um, expressions from, for example, um, I don't know, decimals to, to values or, yeah, and then, Yeah, you can do convert from and convert to methods to transform um, a known binary representation encoding to a drill internal format. Um, There's also the UX date time. It's able to convert the uh, APOC and uh, what is that? Did I pronounce that correctly? EPOC and you can convert it to a different, to a bunch of different data formats. Just, and also the beauty of it is is you can create your own UDF. If you find something that you need to work with, you can go inside and you can say, hey, I need to change my X's disease. Okay, well, you can code something up and you can have that be able to add to your SQL queries, which we find super useful. <laughs> yeah. Are there any challenges you think that need to be resolved in Drill, something that a user should know before starting to use Drill? Um, I think one of the ones is, again, like making sure that you have enough memory and capacity. Um, but if you've kind of allocated enough to it, um, it shouldn't be a problem. Otherwise, you can kind of spend time waiting for your output and result. And uh, a thing we forgot to mention that might spark up some questions for you guys is once you've generated your new data set, so say from the movies that we've shown earlier or the phone numbers, Drill allows you the ability to export your generated data set into a different file or as a view. So you have access to it, you can share it with your organization, it can be fed further down the pipeline for your team to now, say you need the, I don't know, just making something up, a finance department needs to communicate with a customer, you can have that ability via the export function. So a lot mm -hmm. of neat stuff for Drill. Yeah. And again, like, I feel like it's just really beneficial in using it to like access and analyze like big data. Um, it, yeah, like it just becomes, it just becomes significant, significantly cost effective for a company to deploy Apache drill versus, you know, more complex query engine systems. 10 minutes, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think that's that then. Yeah, I think we covered most of the content. Um, I don't know if we should do like a summary on the benefits of, of Drill. I have a couple that we can name, which I think like stand out um, compared to other query engines. 
So one is, again, it, you know, drill itself can identify any schema or any data type on the fly. I find that very attractive. Um, one is that you can query multiple file types and then it has a very flexible data model itself that makes it anyone, that makes it easy for anyone to kind of manipulate and query data. Yeah. And we haven't shared our contact, but if you want to share like how you've been using drill or any UDFs, um, feel free to contact us or connect with us on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, um, we might just end it here. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> well, thanks guys very much for the opportunity and this was an awesome experience presenting here at ApacheCon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. All right, guys. Take, Take care. Take it easy.